Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we are going to talk about whether or not a petrol lighter really needs a gasket or seal on the fuel screw. For that matter, we might as well go ahead and discuss whether or not a petrol lighter actually needs a fuel screw. To illustrate, I am going to use this Japanese made Cupid roller lighter. It is a very odd lighter any way you look at it. From the way that the plating has worn on it, or should I say worn off, it has the name printed on the back spine of the lighter instead of the base. It has what has to be the longest fuel screw ever for a pocket lighter. I just can't imagine a pocket lighter having one any longer. A roller lighter is a long pocket lighter to begin with. Then when you take that fuel screw all the way from the base, make it bend around the corner, which the curve that this one takes causes a little bit of a problem also as it will not take a full length Zippo or Ronson Flint. And then perhaps the strangest thing of all is the fill screw, which is the reason I posited at the beginning of this video that perhaps we should consider whether or not a petrol lighter really needed one in the first place. Zippo lighters don't have a fill screw. They just slide down in there I know it slides down in there pretty tight, but it's still no seal, and it's no great thing for a Zippo to last for at least a week or so on its fuel without any kind of heroic measures being taken to increase the fuel efficiency of the insert system that Zippo uses. The reason I pulled this lighter out yesterday in the first place is because I'm going to sell it. I'd gotten a message in the comments to one of the YouTube videos, somebody asking me about a lighter leaking. And I answered them just letting them know, and they responded, I think, in good fun, saying I'm a dumb dumb. But it's really just experience. If you've never carried a petrol lighter around in your pocket for days or weeks at a time, to know exactly how it behaves in certain conditions, then you might make assumptions that aren't based on reality. The question was either on an Ebello or Ronson lighter, a closed tank lighter either way around it, where the fuel screw is perceived by most to be very important to hold that fuel in. Not only is the fuel screw perceived to be necessary, but also the gasket or seal that goes around the base of the fuel screw. My contention has been, and keep in mind, I overfilled damn near every lighter that I ever put fuel in. So, take that for what it's worth. I don't fill a lighter perfectly, so I may have lighters that leak out a little bit. Now, last night I filled this lighter up. I wish I had videoed that, but I'm going to use this for the next several days so that I can demonstrate a time period and I can give you a certain number of days that this lighter has gone with the fuel screw that it has which is not much of one at all. You may also think if I have a seal and good fuel screw then it won't leak therefore it won't matter if I overfill it but the fact is if you overfill it then you have a very good chance that the lighter is going to suffer from vapor lock here you can see that long flint spring that I was talking about earlier. It is obviously way longer than the lighter itself as it has to go all the way from the base up to the top, bending around that curve that's too sharp for a normal length flint, and then elbow around to where it is putting pressure back at 90 degrees where the file wheel meets the flint. If you do overfill your lighter to the point that it leaks, something else to keep in mind is that any amount that is leaking, especially if you were to leave the fuel screw off of it overnight, then that fuel should evaporate to the point that your lighter should no longer be leaking. 
it's all a very steady balance of how much fuel is in that tank you can see here I filled this up last night it's full it lit up the very first time I struck it last night then I put that fuel screw on it that is got more holes in it than the Seattle Seahawks defense so we'll see now how long the fuel lasts like I said it didn't leak fuel on me last night I did not overfuel it I put the fuel in I put that holy cap on it and it has functioned I think it's lit every time that I struck it in this video today I've used it several times and it has worked every single time our friend Giovanni Abasia commented under the one of the videos last week about how he believes that penguin are superior or penguin Cygnus are superior to Zippo after seeing how they function in my videos but I think it may just be roller lighters in general are better than flip top lighters maybe I should say petrol roller lighters are better than flip top petrol lighters the insert style this is a very interesting lighter though that just boggles my mind I will get such good fuel economy out of this lighter with that big gaping hole right in the center of the fuel screw and then also gaps on each side where the screwdriver slot meets the male thread of the fuel screw I forgot to mention a while ago, I mentioned that the Cupid name was on the back spine, which is pretty rare. You don't see that all that often for the name to be stamped on the back spine of the lighter. But it also has the AIMCO advertising on the back, which you do see that relatively often, especially on uh, roller lighters, aluminum block lighters. You see that on a lot of sickness lighters. This has a really interesting effect. I would really like to know what made this lighter wear that way for that plating to come off. You can see sort of how it's scaling there a little bit on the top. On the sides it is kind of blended in a little bit better. Or maybe it's because those ribs can seal it a little bit better. I don't know. As I said, I'm going to use this until it needs to be refueled then I'm gonna come back and let you guys know then I'm probably gonna make a series of these lighters and who knows I may end up putting this one in the listing for the lighter when I sell it maybe I end up for the first time putting a whole series of videos in the listing when I sell it it's a very well functioning lighter as long as you have short flints on hand and despite the character and the interesting nature of this lighter, I don't think the price tag is going to be too steep. I don't think it's going to take too much to get this one away from me. The first offer may be the right one. So if your lighter is leaking, then just shake it off a little. You've overfilled it. Simple enough. Nothing wrong with that. It is very hard to fill a petrol lighter perfectly. But if you fill it perfectly, it needs no fuel screw. If you underfill it a little bit, then the fuel screw will help if it does seal it off because it will trap the vapor and push them toward the top. But if you overfill it, shake it out, put the fuel screw back in it, don't worry about the seal, don't worry about the gasket. I understand collectors, I understand all that, wanting a complete lighter. What we are talking about here is the function, the practical daily function of a petrol lighter. The fuel screw or fuel gasket is unnecessary. Until next time.